So this is going to be step 43 and in this step we are going to take this application and push it to GitHub. Uh, GitHub is a source control tool that is online that is free for you to use to save your application uh, in case you make any changes and you want to roll back or maybe something happens to your system, your system crashes, you can easily get back this application in GitHub and uh, continue to work with it. So let me show you how to do this. Again, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any updates. And this is step 43. To build this complete application, you have all the steps from step 1 down to this point we are right now. Right there in the description box below this video. If you have any challenges, also let me know. Uh, I'm going to help you. So this is the much we've, we've done. It's a fleet management system. And I think we've really done a good job uh, up till this point. But we keep moving because we want this application to become an enterprise application. The last class, we explained how to encode your password so that your password is not saved in plain text. How do you use bcrypt encoder to encode your password before you save it to the database? So today, let's just push this application to GitHub and let me show you how to do it right now. Uh, so the first thing, again, you have the step-by-step -step here because I normally create a step-by-step -step for all my users, for my subscribers, so that if you miss out something or you forget anything, you actually look at this step-by-step -step and be able to continue working. So the first thing you need is a GitHub account. So you simply go to github.com and create an account. So I'm going to simply open the GitHub website. The create an account is very easy. You simply supply your username and your your password or your email address and then you create your account. So I have a GitHub account, Kainson the Genius, as you know, that's my GitHub account. You can find my the the applications I already created there is called repositories. So you need to put your application in repositories on GitHub. Alright? So what we got we are going to do now the first step is we need to create a new repository. You can see this step one right here it says create a new repository and I'm in GitHub now I'm going to create a, a new repository it's like a container to hold the application code that you are going to push from your local uh, local computer up to GitHub so you simply go here and click on new you can see the new button click on it and specify the name of the repository we call the application fleet app so we call it fleet app all right, fleet app, that's the name of the, the repository. Let's make it public for now, and after I'm going to set it to private, so that I would like to hear from my subscribers. In case you need this complete application, you can just let me know in the comment box, and I'm going to share this repository, I'll give you access to this repository. For now, you have all the application, all the pieces of this application I already provided in, steps, um, in, in parts one and two, uh, when we were getting started. So I'm going to simply uh, leave it at public, and then uh, this initialize with readme maybe not necessary and simply say create so once you've created a repository uh it takes a few a few seconds and it's created so it says if you've done this thing before that this new repository has been created so you can see fleet app kinds of the changes has come slash fleet, uh, fleet app that's the name of the repository I would like to copy the URL of this repository. That's this, this is the URL of this repository. We will need it in Spring Boot to tell Spring Boot to push the application to this repository. So that's step one. So the next thing we want to do is to is to install Gbash, but that is optional because, because uh, like I, I say in step um step three, step two says right click on the application in Spring Boot and choose terminal choose uh, gbash so i'm going to uh, right click uh on the application in spring boot so we have this context menu that comes up and go to show in local terminal now you have gbash you also have terminal so any of them is okay but gbash gives you a linux kind of command line while local terminal uh, while terminal gives you a windows uh um, use up uh, a Windows uh, look and feel on the command on the command line. All right. Me, I like using Gitbash, but you can use anyone. So maybe you may not see Gitbash in your own. Then you can install it. Uh, you can simply you see you download it from this place, install it, and just restart Spring Tool Suite. That is what you should do. So. Uh, Gitbash opens as you can see um, at the lower end. So we have 
or the terminal git bash opens up. So I'm simply going to say git init. So git init simply means initialize a local repository. So um, git init enter. So it initialize an empty repository because if you are going to make, do source control on git hub online, you also need a local git repository to place this application to place your application code. So we now have a local git repository created, and that is step four that we just completed. Next thing we want to do is to add all these project files into the local git repository. So to do that, you simply say git add uh, star adds everything to the local git repository, and it takes a couple of seconds and it adds it. All right. So the next step. Uh, while we are waiting for it to complete, the next step says commit the file from your workspace to the local git repository. So the first step actually is to push to the local git repository what we created just now. Uh, we need to push this application to the local git repository. It's from the local git repository, we now push it to the remote git repository. So that is the steps uh, how it works. So if I could wait for a couple of seconds, it's going to complete, and then we, we move on to the next one that says git commit minus m, the first commit. Now, the, the, the code, the, the, the command here says git commit. That is the, the, uh, the, the required command. Now, minus m, and you specify some kind of message, it's simply a message a, like a tag, a message tag uh, in this committed uh, files saying this is the commit made at a particular time. So that you remember, if I made this commit this day, this is a message that went with it, all right? So it's optional, but it's best practice to do it. So I'm going to say git commit uh, minus m, because this is the first commit. So I'm going to simply say uh, first commit of fleet app uh, for fleet app, all right, and I'm going to simply press enter, and it's going to commit it to the local yeah, git repository. All right, so the next step is now we are going to. Uh, it takes a couple of seconds. We are going to now commit. Uh, we are going to now push from the local. It's committed to the local git repository now. So we are going to push from the local git repository to the remote git, uh, git repository. So to do that, the first thing you need to do is to create, to give a name to the remote git repository. We know the name you created it in GitHub, but in the case in, the, in this kind in this push uh, committing to our repository, remote repository, you need a name for the commit process. Kind of, I don't really know exactly why, but you need to specify a name. So to do that, you simply say git remote uh, add. Um, then you specify the name. So I'm going to say fleet app origin. One word, fleet app origin. That's the name I want to give it. And specify the remote repository URL. So I have it on my clipboard. So I'm going to simply uh, paste it right here. I'm going to press enter. So what happened now? I created a name for the remote repository and tell the, the, the and tell Spring Boot that there is a remote repository. This is the name I'm giving it, and also this is the URL to this remote repository. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is to test that this this remote repository is reachable because sometimes some repository might actually not be reachable. Maybe there's an error in the URL you typed uh, you you typed uh, in the in the command line or something for some reason. Maybe it's deleted for some of us. Some reason at all, this repository is not reachable. Uh, then you can't commit. So let's check whether it's re uh, reachable. We simply say uh, git remote uh, git remote uh, minus v uh, dash v verifies the remote repository. So it's going to do a get a pull and a push, and if everything goes well, it's going to uh, return uh, no error. So you can see. It fetch and also it pushes, all right? So everything works fine. So the next step, which is the last step, which is step nine, is now to push um, uh, to push this uh, file from the, local, from the local repository to the remote repository. So let's see, to do that, you simply take step nine that says git push 
uh, fleet up origin. So you are pushing from this local, the, the local repository we call uh, fleet up origin. We are pushing it across to the remote repository, to the master node in the remote repository. Okay, so, so this is what you do. Um, at this point, it might take a few minutes or seconds, I don't know. So let's just give a few seconds and let's see. Sometimes it takes a sh Oh, wow, it completed successfully. Um, so, uh, so if you, if you find a reason you want to remove the remote repository, you can simply say git remove rm, uh, the name of the repository, but I'm not going to actually execute this command. Fleet up origin. Fleet up origins. If you execute this command, it's going to remove the remo the local repository, and we already have the remote repository. Meaning that any other time you want to commit, you simply also have to take all this process again. But in case you leave the local repository the way it is, then once you want to commit next time, you simply start from step uh, nine. You simply say git push the name of the local repository and master it simply updates the, the remote repository. So what I recommend you to let's now go to to my uh, GitHub online to my GitHub uh, account and check this repository to see if there are some things inside this repository whether it actually pushes uh, these files in there. So I'm going to go back to kinds and genius and uh, if I now go to, let's go to repositories, you can see here, repositories, you can see fleet up right here. So if I open it, you'll see all the files that have been pushed right here. So you can see all the files. You can actually open the SRC main, you have uh, resources, you have um, all the files that uh, is there that has to be pushed across. So one thing I would like to do is to set this repository as a private repository. So in case you actually want it, I'm going to actually share it with you so that you'll be able to, to clone or download the files. I think to set it as private, you go to, to, to settings. I've not actually switched from private to public or public to private. But uh, I think on the actions, I can't remember. So on the actions, maybe we can set it. Okay. So whatever the case, I'll leave that to you. Try to figure out how to set a repository from public to private or from private to public. So at this point, I'm going to stop. I'd like to recommend you subscribe to my channel. I'd like to thank you for viewing. I'd like to recommend you try to follow these steps to throughout from beginning to all the way to the end. I remain kind on the tech pro and I'm always there for you.